A probable replacement for the venerable M1 Abrams tank is depicted in many photos taken inside a U.S. Army workshop. The images appear to show at least three concept tanks, one of which is a giant that dwarfs the 70-ton Abrams. The Army expects to decide in 2023 whether and how to replace the Abrams. The M1 Abrams main battle tank was to be replaced by the American tank design known as the XM-1202 mounted combat system. The first steps in the development process were taken in 2002, when DARPA awarded four contracts to various designers to manage the creation of common air transportable vehicles that could be carried completely constructed on a C-130. Future Combat Systems Manned Ground Vehicles program came to be known as a result of this. And let's take a look what's packed with XM-1202 that makes it capable to replace the legendary M1 Abrams. Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced MBTs at present. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. Since its introduction in 1980, the M1 Abrams main battle tank for the U.S. Army has performed well and established itself as the best MBT in the 1990s and early 2000s. Time moves on, however, and the XM-1202 mounted combat system was proposed as a successor to the M1. The Abrams' combat superiority over the lauded Soviet-designed T-72 MBT was starkly demonstrated during Operation Desert Storm in 1991, especially the Battle of 73 Easting, which is frequently described as the last great tank battle of the 20th century. The MCS did not succeed in the end, despite spending $18.1 billion on its development. The Manned Ground Vehicles Program, which was a component of the Army's Future Combat Systems Program, was launched in 1999 by then Chief of Staff of the Army General Eric K. Shinseki, and here is where the XM-1202 had its start. The process of creating common air transportable vehicles that could be carried on a C-130 completely constructed started in 2002 when DARPA awarded four contracts to various designers. Beginning in 1995-96, theoretical studies for the FCS program, Future Combat Systems, began. At this point, DARPA and affiliated organizations analyzed the capabilities of the armored vehicles that were already in service, as well as the peculiarities of their use in soldiers' current organizational and staff structures. A number of proposals were developed on the basis of such an examination. By the start of the XNUMXs, the FCS program's primary goals and objectives, as well as strategies for achieving them, had been established. First, it was suggested that the Land Brigade's organizational structure be altered and that it be entirely replaced with new pieces of machinery. In addition, new unmanned vehicle types for a range of applications, as well as new controls and communication systems, were all planned. The Manned Ground Vehicles program was started by the Pentagon in 1999 in order to produce the requisite armored vehicles. Its main objective was to create a medium-weight unified chassis platform with the required features. Eight combat and ancillary vehicles of different classes, each with a different set of tools and capabilities, were supposed to be built on the foundation of such a chassis. When the development of a promising technology was initially conceived, it was anticipated that it would be finished by 2008 or 2009, and testing of the first prototypes would begin at the same time. Armory-equipped vehicle testing in the military was scheduled to begin in 2011 to 2012. In order to re-equip the Army, they intended to deploy the 1st Brigade of a new composition equipped with MGV in 2015. Full-scale mass manufacture might start in a few years. In the 1920s, the ground troops' brigades underwent a massive re-equipment. A unified track chassis outfitted with a selection of necessary components intended to serve as the foundation for new equipment versions. Different cases with combat modules or specialized equipment may be mounted on them according to the proposal. The chassis' layout and design were impacted by the requirement to construct various samples. The new machines had to be able to be transported by air. Thus, the customer placed restrictions on the MGV's size and weight based on the capabilities of the C-130 transport plane. Therefore, a product's mass shouldn't be more than 19 to 20 tons. Due to the impossibility of satisfying the conditions, they were later loosened. The allowable mass was raised to 25 tons, and the armored vehicle may need to be partially disassembled in order to be transported by air. Despite having a same chassis for all of those FCS vehicles, 
the XM1202 made use of cutting-edge innovations that set it apart from the rest of the MGV pack. Some of these technologies included the XM360 lightweight gun connected to an autoloader that could fire both the brand new XM1111 guided rounds as well as common 120mm rounds like the M829A3 AFPSDST. These rounds could pierce tanks and other vehicles in a top attack or high angle fashion and were versatile enough to strike structures and bunkers. They were developed for loss bloss engagements. The XM360 had the same barrel size as the M256 main cannon on the Abrams but was 2100 pounds lighter, equipped with an ammunition data link to employ programmed ammunition and had a greater pressure limit to accommodate more potent kinetic energy rounds. The XM1202 was equipped with either a 40mm grenade launcher or the time-honored Browning 50 caliber M2HB machine gun, also known as Ma Deuce, for targets like troop formations or unarmored trucks for whom the 120mm main gun would be a bit overkill. There were only two people on board the vehicle, the driver and the commander, who was also the gunner. The XM1202 included new electronics like second-generation FLIR for the commander as well as a number of next-generation communications sensor technology that boosted situational awareness in order to relieve this reduced crew of mental data overload during Clausewitz's perpetual fog of war. The vehicle included composite and bolt-on add-on armor that greatly improved protection against 14.5mm machine gun fire as well as up to 45mm autocannon rounds in order to maximize the survivability of that two-person crew. The XM1202 tank was a highly promising concept that the Army was very interested in both separately and in conjunction with the FCS or MGV family of systems. The design had to be finished first though so that all essential tests could be run and the concept's practical aspects could be verified. Sadly, despite having all of these cutting-edge characteristics, the Army decided to scrap the XM1202 project in 2009 because to budgetary restraints and a lack of IED protection, the latter of which was a major worry given insurgent tactics and equipment used in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Before the program was stopped, no entire tank was put together. Although finished, a prototype turret and many alternative hulls were never put together. So, in the meantime, the M1 Abrams continues to serve not just with the US, at least with the Army as the Marine Corps is retiring its tanks, but also with Australia, Egypt, Iraq, Kuwait, Morocco, and Saudi Arabia. However, every enticing initiative ended up being overly complicated and linked to elevated technical hazards. As a result, it was not possible to carry out all plans in a way that would produce the intended outcomes in a fair amount of time at an affordable cost. The FCS and MGV projects were terminated, and ground force development took a different course. The two programs did, however, give valuable experience and leave behind some knowledge that can be used to other ventures. Only time will tell if the abandoned XM1202 MCS project will have an impact on how American tanks are built in the future and what kind of impact it will have. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your family and friends. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comments space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.